Today, we're going to be taking Advanced Custom Fields Elemental Pro and we're going to be able to create something quite cool. We're going to have a dynamic contact form. Now, if you saw the previous video that I did with ACF and Elemental Pro, we built a business website with a range of different functions and part of that design template was the contact business button. Until now, we didn't do anything with it. But in this video, I'm going to show you how we can take Advanced Custom Fields data and we can use that to create a custom contact form. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. We've got the contact business button. We click on that. That'll take us down to a relevant section on the site and we have this simple looking contact form. However, what's going on behind the scenes is the two, the recipient for this is going to be the email address that's supplied as part of the business details. So every single business page will have the same form using the same template, but the recipient of the email message will be different each time. It'll be based upon the information that's inserted as part of the business details. Now you might think this is pretty simple and straightforward, but out of the box, Elementor Pro's form feature doesn't allow us to use dynamic data for the recipient. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you using one simple plugin that expands a ton of options, but also gives you this more dynamic control of your forms. So if you're interested, join me as I take you through the whole process right now. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If you'd like to be kept up to date, please consider hitting that subscribe button below, smashing the bell icon and be notified every time new content is added every single week. Okay, so we need to have one extra plugin to allow us to do what we need to, which is create that dynamic link between the data that ACF creates and our contact form. And for that, we're going to be using the plugin Piotnet Add-ons for Elementor. Now, I might well have butchered that name. I do apologize if I have. Now, this is one of those incredibly highly regarded Elementor plugins. If you take a look at the Elementor Facebook group, you will see a lot of people referencing this particular plugin and saying how good it actually is. Now, we're just going to scratch the surface in this particular video, but in future videos, I will take you through and we'll use this in various different iterations for different things. If you want to check this out, you can go over to wptouch.co.uk forward slash P-A-F-E and that'll take you through and you can check out exactly what's on offer. I've already gone ahead, downloaded and installed this and we're going to be using the custom option that allows us to link those dynamic fields to our forms. So let's just come back over into our dashboard and you can see this is the page. I've got everything set up except for the form, the links and so on. So we're going to go through and we're going to create that link now. So the first thing we're going to do is set this button up at the top that says contact business to link through to the relevant section on our site, which is going to be the anchor point that we're going to place underneath the business description. So what I'm going to do is come over to the left hand side and type in anchor. You can see we drag and drop that down there and we'll give that a name and we'll just say contact. So that's going to be the ID for that section. And then all we need to do is come back up to our button, click on it, and then we're going to set our link to be hash contact. And that will then allow us to jump through to that section, just making sure that we don't set anything like open a new window and so on. Okay, so now we've set up that. So if we click, you can see it takes us to the relevant section inside our page template. Next thing we need to do is start building out our form. So I'm going to create a simple heading to start off with. So we just come back over, drop a heading onto our page, and we're going to create some dynamic data in here. So we're going to select it, make sure it's active. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the title section, click on dynamic, we're going to come down and we're going to say post title and that's going to pull in the name of the particular business that we're looking at. Then we're going to come over to the little wrench icon, click on there and before we're going to say quick contact and put a space in there. And what that'll do is that'll put that before the actual name of the business. Let's just tidy that up a little second. That'll put that up before the business. We'll know exactly what's happening. And then we're just going to change this to heading five, for example, and then we're just going to apply some styling to this. Now I've already gone ahead and created the styling, so I'm just going to simply come in and paste my style and there's the first part done. Okay, so we're now ready to start inserting the form elements, but what you need to be aware of is we're not using the default normal Elementor Pro 4. We're going to build this up based upon the Piotnet plugin. So we need to do that slightly differently. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over to this section. We're going to come down to an inner section and drop that underneath there. Get rid of the second column. This is more for styling than for anything else. So we're just going to get rid of that, select this column gap to no gap. Okay, so there's our basic placeholder for our form elements. So let's go through and start building out our form. Come back over to the left hand side. We're going to click, let's close these down just so we can make a little bit more space to see what we're doing. And you can see we've got the path, which is what I'm going to call it from now on because it's easier to say. 
And you can see we've got the path different widgets there. And what we need is the form builder. So you can see we've got field, submit, and multi-step form. We're only interested in the two of these, the field and the submit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a field over into our section, which is our form section. And in there, we're going to create our first form field. Now, this form field is what we're going to use to grab hold of the details that we need for the email address. So the first thing we're going to do is give this form an ID. So you need to give this a unique name and all of the different elements you're going to use. So all the different form elements, the submit button and so on, all need to have this form ID inserted in there. So just make sure you use the same form ID for every single one. So we're going to call this quick contact. I'm going to copy that so I can make sure I can just copy and paste that wherever I need it. The field ID. Which and then we're going to drop in email because this is going to be the email that's going to be used. You can see that creates a short code. And we can use that short code in various different things, including the to field for our form. So we're going to come back to that in a little moment. The type, what we need to do in there is simply come in and we're going to set this to be a hidden element. So no one can see it. It's just going to be there for the form to be able to pass that data over to the relevant section. Then we're going to come into the dynamic section for the default value. Click on there. Let's scroll down to our ACF field, expand that out. Click on the little wrench icon and under the key, we're going to choose business email. Now, the most important thing you need to make sure you do when you set up your custom fields is when you create the field for the email, you set it to be an email field type. Don't set it to text or anything else. It has to be email for this to work. Otherwise, it won't send the email because it's not being formatted correctly when it's being passed as a variable. So just bear that in mind. It has to be set as an email field. OK, so there's the first thing done. We've created our first element, our hidden field element that's going to pass that email address over. Now we can come back out, we can do the same things again. So we're going to simply come back down, we're going to create another field. And inside there, we're going to create another field, which is going to be used for the person's name that's sending the email. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this name. At the form ID, we're going to just paste in that form ID name, which was quick contact. So you remember I said all of the elements for this particular form have to use that form ID and stay the same. Text type is perfectly fine. We can use the label and we're going to say your name, placeholder your name. You can set this to required if you want to. And if you want a required mark on there, you can do that as well. You can see after a couple of moments that will update. doesn't look particularly pretty, but what we can do is we can get rid of this your name section at the top, which is the label. And the reason I'm putting that in there is because when we send the email out, that's actually used to format the content of the actual email itself, the body of the email. So if you don't want to show that, but you still want to use it in there, the easiest thing to do is simply come to the style tab. Under the label, you're simply going to come in there and you're going to set the typography and we're going to set that to be zero. You can see that now we'll leave it in there. It'll still be in your HTML code. So it'll still work with anything that's going to read that information, but it's not going to do anything other than just hide it on here, but it'll still allow us to use it then in the email that's being sent out. Okay. So back to the content, everything is set up inside there. Everything is good to go. We'll create another field doing the same thing again. So come back over, drop another field underneath there, and we'll just put in the same kind of thing again. So first thing we want to do is put the contact, Field ID is going to be, say, sender's mail. Text is fine, but I'm going to set that to be an email just to make sure that it formats it correctly. And again, we're going to put in email and save for the placeholder. The final item we're going to put in coming back out of here is the actual message area. So we're going to come back in, drop in our last field, put in the field, I, the form ID, sorry. The field is going to be message text area we're going to set it at and we're going to say your message save again for the placeholder there we go so we can set any values we want in there to make sure everything is styled the way we want that's perfectly fine so there's the basic elements of our form the last thing we need to do is drop in the actual submit button and that can be used then to trigger things so it works in very much the same way as you would when you're working with the normal forms as part of elementor however like i say it does give us some additional options that work with those dynamic pieces of information the short codes that are being used let's come back over scroll down drag and drop our submit button into there we're going to change that to say send message form id again just making sure that we drop in that form id we'll set this to be a full width and we'll go for medium now obviously like i say we can go through and style this any way we want i'm not going to worry about that in this video i just want to demonstrate how it's all done you can see underneath now we've got all the normal things you kind of expect to see and maybe a couple more things to do with the actual parfait uh sort of plugin that's installed so we're going to do right action after submit I'm going to click on there and you can see email is set up which is exactly what we want to happen once that submit button is clicked the email is going to be sent 
But where's it going to be sent to? Well, we can now configure that. Come back over to the email section. And like I say, this looks exactly the same as what you'd expect to see in Elementor as normal. However, what we can do is we can use the short codes inside this to field. So all I need to do is grab the short code. So if I come back over to our hidden field element, there's my short code. So I'm going to copy that, jump back over to our submit button, making sure then that we come down to the to section. I'm going to get rid of the email address that's in there, and we're going to drop in that short code. Now, once we drop that short code in there, that address now will be used when we send this email. So if we want to, we can go and configure anything else. We can get rid of any of the metadata we want, we don't want. So things like the remote IP, page URL, and so on. Custom messages, we can set all that up. Even if we want to use conditional logic, we can do that as well. But let's keep this really simple. We've set up our form. I'm going to quickly apply some styling to that. And then I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is then, as it's how it all works. Okay, so let's try this out now and see how it all works. We come back into the normal homepage for our site. We'll look at the business directory section and I can choose any of the businesses. So let's just say I'll go for this guest business option. Once I click on there, we'll go over to our template. And our template will have all our relevant information in there, including the email address for that form. So if I click on the contact business button, you can see it now takes us down to our form element. If we look at our title, you can see it says quick contact and the name of the business we're looking at. And then we can go through and we can fill out our email details. So let's just do that. Let's come in and we're going to say, put my name in there. We'll just put in a no email address just so no one can try to reply back. And we'll just say, this is a test message. So we've created our form. We've set everything up and we'll hit send message. And we should then see once that's done, the form has been sent successfully and we've pretty much done what we wanted to do. Now, if you wanted to, you could set this up to go to a different page, a thank you page, whatever you wanted to do, in the same way you can do when it comes down to a normal uh, Elementor Pro form. So you have that option if you want to, if you don't want to have this sort of just message underneath your form. So we set that up. That should now be sent through to the email address that's associated with this account. I can now go and take a look at that and just check that email that's come through. And there we go. There's our email message into our inbox. As you can see, we've got all the key information that we've just sent over from our form. We've also got the information about the date, the time and the page URL. So if anyone is kind of not sure where that came from, they can simply click on the link and go take a look at the page URL itself. So that's how easy it is to create these custom forms and then link those through and use dynamic data from ACF or anything else like pods and so on to be able to create a custom to address. Now, until Elementor starts to include things like this directly into the Elementor Pro version, this is probably one of the best options you're going to have that doesn't require you to install a dedicated form builder. You also obviously get the benefit of all these extra features should you want them. And you can easily enable and disable anything at all to do with this particular plugin. So if we just jump back out of the dashboard and exit out of this back to our normal dashboard, back to everything that's going on. You can see we've got an option on the left-hand side for the PRNet add-ons. If we come into the add-on section itself, we can easily see all the different options we have available to us, and we can enable or disable anything we want in there to make sure we're not loading in things that are completely irrelevant to the project that we're currently working with. So don't worry too much thinking you're gonna end up with a massively bloated sort of plugin installed. This is gonna give you the facilities you want and not have to go through the process of having everything installed on there. So if you wanna check that out, like I say, the link is in the description or you can head over to wptouch.co.uk forward slash P-A-F-E and you can find out all the information to this plugin. And if you'd still like to learn more about working with advanced custom fields and some of the cool things you can do with that when working with WordPress, check out the videos you can see on screen right now, the playlists. They're going to get you up to speed with some really cool things you can do. As always, if you have any comments, questions or feedback, drop those in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.